have your seats. Your Excellency, Salva Kir Mayardit, President of the Republic of South Sudan and Chairperson of the Summit of the East African Community, Heads of State. Your Excellency, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda. Your Excellency, Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud, President of the Federal Republic of Somalia. Honorable Deng Alor Kuol, Chairperson of the East African Community Council of Ministers. Honorable Ministers and Cabinet Secretaries here present. Honorable Dr. Peter Mathuki, Secretary General of the East African Community. Your Excellencies, Ambassadors, High Commissioners, and members of the Diplomatic Corps. Right Honorable Joseph Ntaki Rutimana, Speaker of the East African Legislative Assembly. Permanent Principal and Under Secretaries here present. Esteemed Heads, Representatives of Development Partners. Invited Dignitaries distinguished ESC colleagues, heads of ESC institutions, the media present, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this signing ceremony of the Treaty of Accession by the Federal Republic of Somalia following the decision by the summit of the heads of state at their 23rd meeting held in November 2023. Uh, my name is Wanjiro Mwita. I am the Executive Director of the East African Community Civil Aviation Safety and Security Oversight Agency, which is an institution of the ESC. My role today is that I will be your Director of Ceremonies. Um, our program today will involve um, remarks by the Secretary General, welcome remarks by our host, um, His Excellency Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, a statement by his Excellency Hassan Sheikh Mohamud, President of the Federal Republic of Somalia, a statement by the Chair of the EAC Summit of Heads of State, Honorable Salva Kil Mayardit. And then the, there'll be also the signing of the exchange of the Treaty of Accession. Uh, we will then have a handover of the signed copy of the Treaty of Accession to the Secretary General of the East African Community and then we also have an unveiling and launching of the new map of the expanded East African community. And thereafter, we will have a communique that will be read by the Secretary General of the EAC. So I take this opportunity to invite the Secretary General of the East African community, uh, Honorable Dr. Peter Mutuku Mathuki, to make his remarks and thereafter invite His Excellency Pro President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni. Thank you. SG. Thank you very much, Your Excellency Savaki Mayadit, President of the Republic of South Sudan and the Chairperson of the Summit of the East African Community Heads of State. Your Excellency Yoelka Guta Museveni, President of the Republic of Uganda. Your Excellency Hassan Sheikh Mohamud, President of the Federal Republic of Somalia. Honorable Deng, who all the Chairperson of the ESC Council of Ministers and the Ministers here present. Uh, Dingdara is present, uh, my colleague, Honorable Joseph Ntikirutimana, Speaker of the East African Legislative Assembly with us today. The Permanent Secretary is present. Guests and distinguished uh, East Africans actually were following online. Your Excellencies, all East African are uh, tuned into the TV. Thanks to the courtesies extended to us by your government and thanks to Ken Omona for making that possible. I wish to welcome Your Excellency to this historic day in the growth of the community as we witness the accession of the Federal Republic of Somalia to the Treaty for the Establishment of the East African Community. And as I said earlier, Your Excellency, this is also live 
in our televisions, and therefore we have many East Africans witnessing this. And first and foremost, Your Excellency, I want to extend my sincere appreciation and gratitude to Your Excellency, President Yorika Guta Museveni, one of the founding fathers of the community, for agreeing to host us today, and also remaining steadfast to the cause of regional inter integration. From where we sit, we regard you as a de facto father of our community, Your Excellency. Equally, I want to salute members of the summit, your colleagues, for their profound commitment and for continuous provision of guidance into how we are supposed to make and drive the community, Your Excellency, and particularly the decision they made to admit Somalia into the community. This is a testimony of Your Excellency's uh, dedication and realization of a bigger, stronger, and united region. Your Excellency, again, congratulate His Excellency Hassan Sheikh Mahmoud and the people of the Federal Republic of Somalia on this momentous occasion of acceding to the treaty for establishing the East African community, but also the decision they made to join the ESC family. Your Excellencies, you recall that on 23rd, during your 23rd ordinary summit, you agreed that you admitted the Federal Republic of Somalia to be the eighth member of the community, but as well you again assigned and delegated this assignment of signing of the treaty to the chair of the summit, His Excellency President Salva Kimayadit, and the President of the Republic of South Sudan, and His Excellency President Hassan Sheikh Mohamud to come up together and sign this, and therefore, you being our founding father, you witnessing this is quite momentous, Your Excellency. I want to thank the Excellencies for agreeing on a very short time to come and really undertake this important. Actually, from today, once they sign this, therefore Somalia will have six months, given six months, so that they can go and undertake their internal you know, processes, including ratification of the treaty, and they are supposed, therefore, to deposit this with the Secretary General of the East African community within that period. Upon that, they will start participating in all the programs and activities of the community in the assembly. And I'm sure the Speaker of the East African Legislative Assembly, who is here today, is looking forward to new members of, uh, of the assembly from the Federal Republic of Somalia. And of course, the court, the East African Court of Justice, you'll be able to send a judge, and you're going to also send a defense liaison officer permanently to join others in Arusha, so that now we can continue. Thereafter, we shall now start a, a, a process of integrating, uh, coming up with a roadmap to integrate uh, Somalia into the ESC, and we are looking forward to this, uh, this, this very important happening, Your Excellencies. And therefore, the benefits of the community of the Somalia and the community expanding were well articulated by their Excellencies. And I remember Your Excellency, President uh, Museveni reminding us the expansion of the community is the future of our people, is the future of our region and, the, and indeed the, the continent, because it's about markets. And therefore, I'm sure the Council of Ministers who are here present, represented by the Chair, and the Right Honorable Kadaga, who is here, they will be able to guide the process to ensure that Somalia is fully integrated and with the support of the Secretariat. And therefore, right from the outset, I want to commit that the Secretariat will be ready to ensure that Somalia is fully integrated. In fact, what, from where I sit, what I see in terms of the community we want is the expanded community because that is the only way we become independent as partner states of East African community. And therefore, admission of Somalia is one of those things. And Your Excellency, uh, President uh, uh, Museveni, you, you, I was, as our de facto father, and I'm sure every home is proud to have a father who is like you to guide us in terms of expanding this community. I remember in 1995, 1st January, EU, Three countries, Austria, Finland, and Sweden, they joined the EU the same day. And there will be nothing wrong whatsoever with other countries within the region, Ethiopia, Djibouti, and others, to join so that we can have a stronger 
East African community. And that is where I think we, we need to go. But also the expectation of the people is to see how to deepen the regional integration in terms of functioning of the community. How can we have freedoms? How can we have freedom of movement of people, free movement of goods and services and money within the community so that people can move, can do business, and we expand our community? And that, I'm sure that is what people would expect. In fact, a situation where we have electronic non-stop border posts where goods can pass and move freely within the region without necessarily having roadblocks, because that's how we expand and grow the community. And therefore, we look forward for that guidance, and we really look forward, we are ready to participate in this so that our community can grow. Your Excellencies, as I conclude, you directed the Council of Ministers to do whatever they can to ensure this is happening. Uh, when, the e when the EU began their program in 1992, within a span of three years, they had a currency. The, the euro was functioning, and therefore they were able to grow very fast and facilitate the movement of goods. And therefore, every time the right of Okadaga is challenging me, why are we not having a common currency? And I'm sure this is an opportunity to have the minister, the chair of the council, Deng, to push the rest and we see whether we can, even if we have a currency that is running parallel with other national currencies, to facilitate trade. And up the research we have as ESC, we have seen, with a common currency, you are going to reduce the cost of production by 0.5% of our GDP. And that is the only way we can do business. And therefore, Your Excellencies, with your guidance, and particularly guiding the ministers of finance, we need to have a common currency that is working for the people of East Africa, and that is possible. If that was done by EU within a span of three years, from 1992 to 1995 or six, it is possible now 20 years down the line, we have some of these things working for our community. And I know that is the dream of your excellencies. From our part as a secretariat, we are ready to walk that journey with you and to support to ensure that we have really a functioning community for the good of the people of East Africa. With those very few words, Your Excellencies, it's my pleasure and honor to, to invite His Excellency, Yorika Gutam Seveni, President of the Republic of Uganda and the hosts, who invited us to be here in his house and really thank him for all the courtesies that have been extended to us as a community to undertake this very important activity of the community. Most of welcome, Your Excellency. Uh, His Excellency, General Sarvakir Mayadit, the President of the Republic of South Sudan, and the current chairperson of the, of the East African community, His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed, President of the Federal Republic of Somalia, and the new member, the, the one who is about to be the new member now, because he's about to, 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 to be baptized. The Secretary General, all the big people here, the Luak Madong, Madwong, who said Madit in Achori, all the big people. I'm, I'm glad that the Secretary decided to have this ceremony here. And I am here now in, 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 I think, four capacities. Capacity number one, I belong to one of the old, of the most indigenous tribes in this part of the world. We have been here for a long time, our, our, our tribes here. So, I can tell you what was happening long before the Europeans came, before the Arabs came, I am here. I have all the information. Secondly, I am here as, a, as an activist who for the last 60 years we have been pushing for some of these African uh, uh, programs. Number three, you heard that I was one of the 
founders in 1999 when we resurrected the East African community in Arusha. Now number four, I am still around here. As, 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 a, as a sitting president. So therefore, it's my duty to, again, as I told you in Arusha, to remind you of the logic. What is the logic of East Africa? Why? Why East Africa? Reason number one, for the last 60 years, following our, our elders, Mwarimu Nyerere, Mzei Kenyatta, Jaramogi, Odinga, Tom Boya. Tom Boya was a big supporter of the integration. Joe Murumbi, Joseph Murumbi. I will not mention Njonjo. Ah, that one I will not mention. That one was on, on another line. But these people, are then the ones in Tanzania, in Burundi, Ragasore, Ragasore, Rumumba, in Congo. So th this has been the group that has been pushing for this logic. And, and what is the logic? Th three points. Question number one. Do you want prosperity for your people or not? If you say you want prosperity for your people, then the question is how? How will you achieve it? Will you achieve it by getting aid from Europe or what? No, the answer is no. The only way you can achieve sustainable prosperity is when you produce a good or a service and sell it. You sell it today, you sell it tomorrow, you build up prosperity of the home, prosperity of the company, if you have got a company, prosperity of the country. But then, if you say pros prosperity comes from selling goods and services, who buys? Who buys? That now leads, leads you to the next question that the more buyers you have, the better. This is really the logic of, the, of, the prosper, of number one, prosperity. Do you want prosperity for your people or not? And if you want examples, they are there in the world. The United States is now one of the richest countries in the world. But neighboring, there is Latin America. In terms of natural resources, Latin America has got more natural resources than the United States. More water, more minerals, more, more, more forests, and yet they are the most miserable people in the world. You see them walking on foot, going to the United States to look for, for food, to look for running from a resources-rich continent to a much less richer part of, of the world because of the, the other one is better organized. That United States created space for people who want to do business. If I'm a businessman in New York, what I produce can be sold up to California. So how will I not be rich? How, how will I not be progressed? So therefore, the challenge which the Africans have is what are you, going, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to build a Latin America in Africa or a United States of Africa in Africa? If you say you, you are determined to build a Latin America in Africa, then uh, God bless you. So this is the first logic. The second logic is strategic security. How can, how can we be secure? from, you see what's happening in, in, in the world, the wars, the what, and what happened to us. How can we be secure? 
Can Uganda alone be secure in the world? Even if Uganda becomes a developed country, can it be secure really against America, against uh, China? Now, suppose China decides to, to become uh, an imperialist power. They are developing now. They don't have a lot of resources inside China. There are very many people there. Suppose they say we are too many here. Some of us should go to Africa. How shall we defend ourselves against uh, so that's why we say the second logic is strategic security. Then the third logic, third reason is, by the way, these people we are trying to unite, who are they? The answer is that they are, they, are, they are either similar people or people who are linked. You have the Bantus all the way up to South Africa. You have our Nairotic people uh, all the way up to uh, Sudan. Uh, there is a group in Ethiopia called uh, Anyuak. When I meet them, I speak with them in Achori. They speak Achori, I speak Achori. Uh, but then East Africa is lucky. We have Swahili, Swahili which links us. So therefore, these are the people we are saying, you, you people, you unite. First of all, to solve the problem of your prosperity. Secondly, to guarantee your strategic security. And by the way, you seem to be similar or to be the same, and you have linkage. This is, what we, this, is the, this is our logic. For the last 60 years, this is what I've been involved in. Now, therefore, I'm very happy. I can see like this, because at, when Africa was taken over, we got scattered. South Sudan was under the Arabs. Congo was under the French. Burundi, Rwanda, we are under the French. And, and Belgians, I think they were Belgians or something like that. Uh, here, we, we are British, we are British. Part of, the, in, in Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania. There were Germans in Tanzania before. Now, we were cut off. Before the Europeans came, although we were not governed together, but we, you could move from here all the way up to the coast of East Africa. Uh -huh. you could, we, we knew from here, you go to Karagwe, Tanzania, you go to, to Buhaya, you go to Bujinja, you go to Sukuma, you go to, 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 to the coast. On this side, Congo, we are calling Congo Bulega. That's why you hear that one of our kings was called Kavalega. In the north here, you would go to Buchiri, Buchiri is Lango, Bugani is uh, Achori. You go to Bari, we knew Bari, we were linking with the Bari in, in South Sudan on this side. But when the, the, the colonialism came, it cut us off. So I am glad now the East African community is reassembling, reassembling this, this area. Uh, and uh, so uh, I, I am very happy to welcome you here. Uh, I don't know why they, they chose us, because I'm not chairman. Uh, what was the reason? You, you, you said I was one of the ancient people. Thank you very much, and I congratulate so much. So I was telling His Excellency, in 1968, they had a very clever prime minister called Muhammad Egar. He, he wanted to join the community in 1968. Uh, he came to Arusha, he, he wanted to, to, to join. But then Idi Amin came in here, then no problems then. Uh, but but uh, we, we, we solved the issue of Idi Amin here, and that's how we are able to be part of the, uh, of the solution. So I welcome to Uganda. Uganda is your home. Uh, you, you, are, you are most welcome, and I congratulate Somalia for, for, Somalia is already part of the community. I'm sure if you go to Mogadishu now, you'll find goods in the shops from Kenya, I'm sure from Kenya or even from Uganda, if you go in the shops. 
So this idea that, that uh, what, what is happening now is, is, is baptism of what is already happening on the ground. Do Muslims have baptism? Do they baptize also? <laughs> thank you. I, I thank you so much and I welcome you to Uganda. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for the words of wisdom. Every time you speak, you inspire so many East Africans. And some of us who believe in your philosophy, we listen carefully, Your Excellency. And now with that, allow me, Your Excellency, to invite His Excellency Hassan Sheikh Mohamud, President of the Federal Republic of Somalia, the newest kid in the block, to make your remarks. Most welcome, Your Excellency. Yeah. Your Excellencies, President Salfakir Meyerdit, esteemed Chairman of the East Africa Community, I also extend my gratitude to His Excellency President Yuri Kuta Museveni for hosting us today, a historic day for both East Africa and Somalia. Dr. Peter Mathuki, the dedicated Secretary General of East Africa, Secretariat, thank you for the hard work you did during our process of joining the East Africa. Today is a moment of immense pride as we celebrate Somalia's admission to the East African community. This community, as I said earlier, is where Somalia belongs to. It symbolizes realization of our collective aspirations and is a beacon of hope for future.